A modified coupe with a smoothly integrated cargo bed may not look as appealing as it did five or six decades ago, but that segment left us with some of the iconic nameplates of American automotive history, including the good old Ford Ranchero. And guess what? It's coming back to remind us about its glorious past and to show us a roadmap to the future. From our perspective, the new 2024 Ford Ranchero is a game changer. Everything we know about pickups won't matter in this case because the new Ranchero will offer a new path to sustainability, mixing it with unprecedented affordability and flexibility. Let's take a better look. A little bit of a different comeback than expected. The Ranchero is coming back, but if you look at Farley's recent statements, this won't be a typical revival because, as we've just mentioned, coupe utes are not exactly the most appealing body style these days. During these several decades of its absence, car designers and engineers figured out new, better ways of practicality and flexibility, so it's hard to believe that the Ranchero could come back to its original form. Moreover, in days when even full-size SUVs and pickups predominantly rely on turbocharged six- or even four-cylinder engines, it's hard to imagine an old-school Ranchero in a modern iteration, as this coupe ute was typically equipped with an eight-cylinder engine. Essentially, coupe utes were muscle cars back in the day, but that won't be the case this time. So you probably wonder, what's the deal with the new Ranchero when it's obvious that it won't have many things in common with the original? things are actually pretty clear. As we live in an era when nostalgia can be a pretty effective trigger on buyers, using a good old well-remembered nameplate is a perfect way to give the new model a better starting position and boost initial sales. And we know some of you may be disappointed after hearing all this, but the new 2024 Ranchero will be anything but a disappointing vehicle. No, looks like it could have a pretty bright future, with its unique design approach that blends affordability with functionality. Moreover, it will also offer a high level of flexibility, which will make it suitable for various markets around the world. Size, Body Style, Platform with the ambition to perform in various markets around the world, it's pretty clear that the revived Ranchero will have to be a pretty flexible car. And along with the idea of making it super affordable, it's pretty clear it won't be a particularly large pickup. It will be notably smaller than the Maverick, with the wheelbase going roughly around 105 or 110 inches. Along with the shorter wheelbase, we expect the same thing with the overall length. For reference, the Maverick is good for about 200 inches, while this one will most likely be around 180 inches long. The whole idea is to offer something maneuverable but practical enough, so you may guess that a classic coupe utility body style derived from a coupe layout is not going to happen. Instead, we're about to see a little bit more rugged appearance with classic pickup proportions. Different markets have different requirements, so it's very likely that the new Ranchero will come both in single and dual cab layouts. The latter seems necessary these days, as small pickups also impose an excellent solution for those looking for an affordable family hauler. On the other hand, a single cab layout offers a lot of commercial potential. This won't be just a fleet vehicle or a cheap running solution for farmers and contractors. It will be way more flexible in the way that the chassis may offer additional options in terms of body style configuration. Of course, we don't expect it to be as polyvalent as the Hilux Champ with its ability to turn into an ice cream truck, but on the other hand, as Europe is going to be one of the key markets, a panel van layout seems like a logical outcome as the Ranchero could also come as a replacement for the long overdue transit courier. This leads us to the platform, where the new Ranchero has a couple of possibilities to be based on. As mentioned, the old days of muscle cars are gone, so don't expect to see the new small pickup based on Mustang. Instead, count on something way more conventional, something with a transversely mounted engine and front-wheel drive layout. The C2 architecture is the first that comes to mind, as it already proved its value with the Maverick, which is currently selling like hotcakes. That platform might serve as a good foundation for Ranchero, but we're still closer to something even smaller, because the new Ranchero needs to be small and super affordable, and that involves smaller engines as well. With all that in mind, the familiar B platform seems like a natural choice. 
This architecture already underpins a range of small cars, including the Puma, a small crossover that may be one of Ranchero's closest relatives and a donor of most of the mechanics. This includes pretty much a complete chassis and suspension setup, though some sources suggest that, as a pickup, the Ranchero might come with an even simpler rear suspension and replace the torsion beam with a solid axle. That would probably make the ride stiffer, but would also have a positive effect on the max payload capacity. Styling will also play an important role in Ranchero's commercial success. With the nameplate that definitely has some weight, it's obvious that this can't be just a dull commercial vehicle. That may work with Maverick, as that pickup is spacious, practical, and very efficient. In the case of Ranchero, there's not as much maneuvering space, so Ford will have to put some focus on the styling as well. The good thing is that the aforementioned Puma crossover already looks great. It's sleek and modern, which could be a winning combination for a small pickup like this. The front part of the vehicle, from the bumper to the B-pillar, could look pretty much identical. Slightly altered, those Puma's funky lines could even bring a few old Ranchero vibes, while the rest of the vehicle will benefit from all the practicality that comes with an open bed layout. Engines and Performance as mentioned, we won't see a V8-powered muscle car Ranchero again. Instead, this will be a small and affordable unibody pickup, and with that in mind, one of the focus points will be efficiency and low running costs in general. Once again, we can talk about the relationship with the Puma crossover, which could borrow a couple of engines. These are small and efficient three-cylinder turbocharged units that would make this pickup perfect for various markets around the world. A 1-liter EcoBoost seems like a perfect entry-level option with its max output of 125 horsepower. The same engine is available in a variant with 140 horsepower, while there is also a little bit bigger, but also a 3-cylinder 1.5-liter engine that puts out quite an impressive 200 horsepower. With various markets in mind, a diesel version is also an option, despite that emission rules are getting stricter these days. A 1.5-liter turbo diesel with 120 horsepower seems like a perfect pick, especially if we consider the max torque of 221 pound-feet, or 300 newton meters if you please, which is plenty enough to carry a chassis like this with ease. In the case of a bigger C2 platform and relationship with Maverick, bigger and more powerful engine options are in the game. More importantly, this opens us to the possibility of seeing a capable and super-efficient hybrid version, which turned out to be an excellent powertrain choice in the case of Maverick. With the drivetrain that uses some technical solutions borrowed from Toyota, this 191 horsepower system achieves 42 miles per gallon in the city with ease, while the smaller and lighter Ranchero would be capable of making even better results. But once again, we can get back to the B platform, as it also offers a solution for greener transportation, maybe a better one. Namely, the aforementioned Puma crossover is coming in an all-electric version later this year, with a setup that could find its place in Ranchero as well. Details are still unknown, but insiders suggest 250 miles on a single charge, as well as the ability to add 54 miles of range in just 10 minutes. Interior Design Traditionally, cabin design is where most car makers cut their production costs, and with the ambition to be one of the most affordable pickups on the market, the new Ranchero won't be an exception. The dashboard design is one of the first things that come to mind, and we're pretty sure it will be very car-like. Installing Puma's dash would be a good way to save money, but even that would require certain revisions. We are talking about the selection of materials. While the Puma features quite an appealing dashboard and relatively nice materials, the Ranchero will have to keep things low rent to remain affordable. Excessive use of hard plastics is the first thing that comes to mind, along with the lack of some convenient features you would normally find in Puma, especially when it comes to the entry-level, commercial version of the van. But still, we don't expect to see the new pickup lacking modern tech. A relatively large infotainment screen should be part of the standard equipment, just like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone integration, though most likely wired. 
A decent portion of standard and available driver assistance features is also expected. As mentioned, a double cab version is a certain thing, and despite the relatively short wheelbase, we don't expect Ford to compromise on passenger space. Two spacious rows and the ability to accommodate adults with ease is a safe bet, as this configuration is expected to be a natural choice for families. The open cargo bed will bring that additional dose of versatility, but don't expect more than 4 feet in size. A more practical cargo area will remain reserved for single cab models, which will primarily be offered as commercial vehicles. In the double cab layouts, things might be compensated in the way that Ford could offer some kind of a flexible technical solution, such as a mid-gate design, which would ensure more cargo room when needed. Just remember that Ford recently introduced its new patent called Pivotable Sill for a Vehicle, where even the front seats fold flat. Well, the Ranchero might be the first production model to come with this new feature. Combined with other qualities we've just talked about, it can help Ranchero stand out from the crowd as a pickup that blends affordability and functionality like no other vehicle on the market. What do you think of the new Ranchero? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.